QuickBooks Online 2022 Rental Income Customer Deposit. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We set up with a 30-day free trial. Holding down control, scrolling up just a bit to get to the 125% currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. The business view as compared to the accounting view. If you wanted to change to the accounting view, it's something you can do by going to the cog up top. Switch to the accounting view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping over to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Going back to the Get Great Guitars, opening up a few tabs, going to the tab up top to do so, right-clicking on it. Going to duplicate that tab so we can put some reports into these tabs. That's why we're doing it. Tab to the left, right-click again. Let's duplicate another tab. Tab to the left, let's do it one more time and duplicate another tab. I'm going to jump on over to the sample company file just to locate, to locate where the reports are at in the accounting view, which is right on the left-hand side, reports right there. Going back then to the business view, second tab, the reports are located here in the business overview section, and they're in the reports. Closing the hamburger. We're going to open up the balance sheet first, the big balance sheet. Going back up top to range the change. We're going to go from 010122 to 1231.22. Run it. Tab to the right. And now we're going to go back to the uh, business overview. Let's open up another report here and close up the hamburger. This time the profit and the loss report. And let's do a little bit of a, of a difference here. Let's say we do a comparative profit and loss so I can see the, the two months on the same report. So let's do this from 010122 to 022822. And let's make the drop down here. Let's make that go into months. And then we're going to go ahead and run that. So now we got the January, the February, which we're currently working on, and the year to date on the right hand side. That leaves us the tab to the right where we can open up the trustee trial balance, which we can get back into practice of opening up because it's an excellent report. Closing the hamburger and typing in trial balance to open it up. There it is, open it up, ranging the changing up top, 010122 to 1231.22 and run it. Last time we went up in our epic novel about Get Great Guitars back to the first tab, that we were we were thinking about uh, having rental people come in and rent some band equipment and we set up our items to do so we did that by going into the get paid area and we went then into the the products and services which if you were in the accounting view would be under the sales area and the products and services and we said we're going to imagine hold close on the hamburger that that we have the set baseline a band set which had a couple guitars an amp and a drum set that people could then uh, rent we're imagining and then they can add to it if they wanted to with the with the adding of an amplifier and another guitar or something like that so now we're going to imagine someone comes in and requests to us to reserve the rental equipment for say the following weekend and uh, we're going to have to and the, we're going to collect a deposit on it so we might then determine what the deposit is and set the date with an estimate to make sure that we're keeping the equipment reserved for them and then uh, collect a, a down payment on it. So that's what we'll do now. Okay, so we're going to imagine someone calls in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select the item up top. We're imagining someone's calling in. They're saying, I want to I wanna reserve some rental equipment. And we're going, okay, let's make an estimate. We're going to need a down payment from you then. We need, we need a payment, not just a payment, but a down payment. That payment's down. Okay. We're going to go then. This is going to be customer number five. You've ju I've just given up on, on cool names. Customer number five. Customer number five here. And we're going to save that. And we're going to say then that this happened on, let's say, the 27th. Let's bring it, bring it to 0227. Uh, 2 2 February 27th that is and then we're gonna go on down 
and say that they, what do they want? Well, we've got the baseline. You're going to have to buy the standard band set, and that's going to be uh, $200, $2,000. And then they're saying, we need an extra guitar in our band set. So we're like, okay, we can do that. We can add another guitar rental, add a guitar, add one guitar. And so they, they want two more guitars. Okay. Two more guitars at $50 each. That brings us up to 100. And then we're going to add an amplifier too. So we're going to add an amplifier. These are the items we set up last time. And they want four amplifiers. I don't know where I came up with that. Four amplifiers. That's what they want it to be super loud. Surround sound amplifiers. So we're like, all right. We need a down payment though. We need a payment with like Bitcoin so it's down. So it's a super down payment. So, no, we need, a, we need the payment up front in other words. So we got the 2260. Let's imagine we calculate the down payment on it. I'm just going to make up the down payment, but we might basically say it was it was like 10% of whatever we think the rental is going to be or whatever, something like that. So then we're going to calculate the down payment. I'm going to save and close this. And then this estimate will help us to reserve the time frame and know what they want when they come in and pick pick the item up. So we're going to then say if I went into my, for example, get paid and paid area, close up the hand boogie and go down we've got we've got then i want to go to the customers section though that i'm going to go to the customers area and then close up the ham boogie and then we could go down to customer number five number five there's the estimate that we have pending for our new customer so we're going to say that they we need 200 dollars down in order to reserve it so i'm going to go okay let's go up top and there's, this is where we got a couple different ways that we can record this because we, we're running into the same issue of the unearned revenue. And this is another area of unearned revenue. It's similar to the kind of system that you might have for like rental of a building or something like that. If you had rental of uh, apartments or something like that, then you might collect a, a down payment or you might collect a uh, last month's rent, for example. And when that happens, you didn't actually do the work, but you've got money, so you're gonna have to put it into the bank account, but the other side is gonna go then to not income, but some kind of liability account because you actually owe something back at that point in time. So we could do that a couple different ways. We had two methods that we looked at in order to do that. I think the easiest method from a bookkeeping standpoint is actually to create a negative receivable as opposed to a positive liability because the negative receivable allows us to then track the, the information in the customer area a little bit more clearly, and we can then tie out the invoice to it a little bit more clearly. In other words, these two things integrate naturally within the accounting system, whereas if I create another account, then it's, it's a little outside the system that's trying to track the information by customer. So in any case, we're going to have the receive payment. If you want more detail on those two methods, however, you could take a look at our prior presentation on it. And so we're going to say we've got the receive payment. And this is going to be from customer number five. Customer number five. It says, hey, we don't, I'm paraphrasing. It says, hey, we don't have an invoice to apply that to. And we're going to say that's okay because we want you to make a credit out of it. In other words, an advance payment that you can then apply to the invoice that we will make in the future. I'm just going to call it a cash payment. It's going to go into the deposits uh, payments to deposit, which is just another name for undeposited funds. If you know undeposited funds from, you know, working with QuickBooks in the past, that's what they used to call it, just a clearing account that will be holding the cash until we make the deposit. We're going to make it for $200. What's this going to do? It's going to increase or let's say decrease the receipt payments decreases accounts receivable, but there's no invoice to apply it to. So for this particular customer, customer, this should be customer number five, customer number five, make sure it's customer number five for this particular customer, then uh, you, you're going to have a negative receivable. The other side, then it's going to go into the clearing account of payments to deposit, which used to be called undeposited funds. So let's save it and close it, save it and close it. Uh, you didn't select an invoice. I know and we're going to say okay let's go into the balance sheet and see what has happened and we're going to let's let's run it so to make sure that we have a fresh we're working with fresh stuff and then we have the 
Where did it go? Payment to deposit. There's the 200 right there. That's where it went. It went right there. It's right in front of your face. And then we've got the accounts receivable AR going into the A to the R. Scrolling down a bit. We're going to see that we have then customer number five, the 200. That looks good. It doesn't, of course, flip the accounts receivable balance total into a negative. But when I look at that one individual customer, I'm going to have a negative balance. So, for example, let's make another report on the right-hand side. Right-click on the tab to the right and duplicate it. This will be the sub-ledger, the sub-report, the uh, customer balance summary for the accounts receivable by going to the reports on the left-hand side, closing up the hand boogie, and then we're going to scroll down. We're going to look for the, the who owes you money stuff. Who owes you money? We're looking for the customer balance detail customer balance detail and then let's uh let's change the date customizing it because i'm working in the future 12 31 2 2 12 31 2 2 i got everything done in the present and i work in the future now to get stuff done so anyways we're in number five customer number five down here we could see the payment for 200 with a negative amount so now we've got this negative receivable, which for financial statement purposes is not exactly correct because it should be a positive liability, not a negative receivable. However, when we then add the invoice, it will be tracked and linked quite nicely using the negative receivable. And if we want to report externally, then we can do an adjusting entry, which will be adjusting this negative receivable to a positive liability. That's not the adjusting entry you might be used to if you worked in accounting problems that are tracking unearned revenue, where unearned revenue goes up during the period. You figure out how much has been earned, and then you decrease the unearned revenue, record revenue for the amount that has been earned. That's a typical book problem. We have a different problem kind of here with regards to linking the payment to the invoice, which internally works quite well having this kind of negative receivable component. So in any case, let's go back to the first tab and see how it looks in our our customer number five area. What, why is this doing this? Go away thing. That didn't look right. I hope I didn't mess anything up. Here we go. So then we've got the estimate down here and now we've got the payment. And so when they when they when customer number five comes into play here, this whole family customer, the customer family, when customer number five comes in, then we can make the invoice with the estimate. We can apply out the payment to it and hopefully provide them their equipment, which they can rock and roll with. Let's go ahead and record the deposit now. So if I go back up top, we've got this money. And in, in if I'm looking at the balance sheet, we've got this money uh, that was put into the 200 into the payments to deposit the clearing account. Let's go ahead and just make that deposit into the checking account now. Go into the tab to the left to do it. We're going to say the the uh, the hamburger. We're going to go into the plus button and choose the bank deposit. So we're imagining that this is the only item that we have thus far that we need to deposit at one time. It's going to hit the bank statement at $200 in other words. So we're just going to be putting that $200 into the bank in our system so that we can reconcile it easily. This will be increase in the checking account, decrease in the clearing account of what used to be called undeposited funds, now funds to be deposited or something like that, whatever it's called, I forgot. Let's go ahead and save it and close it and then go back on over and we can see what it's called because it'll be right here. Let's run it again, run it so we're fresh. Let's go into the cash, which should now be deposited, deposited cash down here, $200 looks good. Going back up top, other side should be on the the short, no, the, what do they call it? Payment to deposit. Payments to deposit is back to zero. And if I go into that one, we can see that $200 going up with the, with the payment form and then back down with the deposit. So that looks good. Going back to our report. Notice that this whole time there has been no impact on the income statement. So we haven't been able to look at our super cool, you know, month by month income statement over here. But next time, next time that will come into play. So even though we got money, we didn't earn the revenue. That's the point. That's the point of 
the unearned revenue type of situation. Let's go to the trusty trial balance and see where we stand thus far. Thus far, this is where we stand. So hold on a second. We gotta change the date range up top. 010122 to 123122. Run that. And I also have one adjustment that I think the, the system, it tried to adjust the sales tax last time I went into it. So I'm gonna go into this accounts receivable right here. And I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna scroll down to this string music, which was in a prior presentation. And I think uh, QuickBooks adjusted the sales tax last time I went in there. So I'm gonna go back into that and put it back at our generic 5%. So everything will match out it's when we do our bank reconciliations and everything. So I think it adjusted it right here. So I'm gonna change the math on this one. And we're gonna go down and say, I want you to override and put that generic 5% because it's a practice problem. And stop changing that, QuickBooks. It's a practice problem, that's why. It's a practice problem. Save it. Okay, so we're at the 530. I'm gonna save it and close it. So there we have it. That's where we stand at this point. With that one, I'm going to go back to the trial balance. And this is what we have thus far with the trusty TB at this point, holding control, scrolling up. If you're tied into these numbers, great. If not, it might be a date issue. Take a look at uh, the date ranges. And uh, we'll be looking at the transaction detail at the end of the section, which is great for diagnosing any differences.